this is a great time to waste all of your money, if you still have any after Prime Day, that is, and you probably don't. But you could have also spent it on this. I mean, you would have to be insane to spend a large quantity of money on things like this, because you get a Tier 2 vehicle, and then you spend 20 hours in the queue, and you have to think about what you've actually done. So, not really a great idea. Stay away from the draws. Stay away from the gambling boxes. In 95% of cases, you simply just lose money. Well... Let's be honest here for a second. You always lose 100% of your money if you spend money on Blitz. Because the second you spend it, it's gone. It loses its value immediately. The things that you own in World Tanks Blitz aren't your property. You don't own anything, which means your money's gone. So you better have fun with the money that you spend. Otherwise, you're just throwing it out the window. And believe me, I throw a lot of money out the window. Is this that, though? Well, not quite. Now, here's the thing. t 42 is a really great vehicle for everything, really, and for everyone, because it is the perfect all-rounder tank. It's not terrible at anything, it doesn't do really absolutely amazingly well at anything, but it is a well-rounded vehicle that can do just about anything, so I always highly recommend picking up this vehicle. And the Canadian one is one of the better Tier 9 vehicles, and one that I actually find worth considering, unlike something like a WZ-114 or, or whatever, that are just completely a waste of space. This thing is pretty damn solid, but... I would love to see this bundle of something like 15k, because the times 5s here are locked to the vehicles, which just completely devalues them by double. So, not really great. And there's not really anything else in here. There's no premium time. There's just camos and an avatar. And at this point, avatars have a negative value because they jack up the price without ed adding anything to the bundle. So, yeah, that's not great. But if you really want those two vehicles, and if you're a tank collector... I'm not a fan of the price, but those two vehicles are absolutely excellent and are definitely worth picking up. Maybe they're going to be cheaper eventually, but they are definitely worth getting. So here's the thing. With these kind of bundles, credits, not a great thing here. Again, avatars in here, they just increase the price without increasing the value, and those kind of things are always terrible. Uh, but if you need the gold, if you need the uh, premium time, it depends on you if you need the resources, right? Because resources, you should only buy them if you actually need them, and if they're going to help you have more fun in the game. If you just, uh, I don't know, buy them to research the 183, and then you play the 183, and you're like, oh, wait, this sucks, uh, rightfully so, then you kind of just wasted your money because you're exchanging money for enjoyment. If that doesn't happen, you're wasting your money, basically, which is why I don't spend money on Blitz anymore. But anyway, so here's the thing. Creds, not a great value, but if you need the premium time, if you need uh, the gold to, let's say, research a new tech tree, it can definitely be worth it. What you could, for example, do is get something like this. Right here, you get the gold, you get the premium time, um, and then with that premium time, you grind some creds, and after that, you use your gold to buy some certificates to grind yourself a new tech tree. So now you've made your creds, and you get your new tech tree, boom, just like that. And then you can also combine that and just get the times fives and the gold right here in something like this, but uh, it depends. Again, think about it. Is the money that you spent gonna get you more fun in the game? If the answer is no, don't spend your money. So, again, already talked about that. 8.5k for the T4E2 on its own. Not amazing. Used to be 10k, so it did go down a little bit. Now, this is about the highest absolute maximum I would ever defend for a tier 8. Like, 10k is all already excessive. But 8.5k, 8k, it must be the best tier 8 f f for it to justify that price. Now, the T4 is definitely up there, right? But it was sold for cheaper. If you don't have the vehicle and you want it right now, it's fine, right? I'm not going to complain about that. But there are better offers available for this vehicle that were in the past and hopefully will be in the future. But if you really want the damn thing right now, I'm not going to say anything against it. It can be worth it. I will be playing it later. Um... But generally, that's just fine. The Cobra, it's a meme tank. Like, it's, it's a meme. And these times fires are locked. So I generally don't recommend this vehicle because you can just have the T49 and have fun. But again, if you do think this vehicle that is quite slow, doesn't really have a lot of armor, and doesn't have good shells either. I mean, it's got heat and HE and a 400 and 500 alpha damage with only 2000 DPM. It is quite a challenge. But if you do think this vehicle is going to be a lot of fun for you, then, uh, well, there isn't anything else I can say against that. But I personally would not recommend the Cobra whatsoever. And then there is the STRVK here. Solid tank. Not good. Not terrible. But wouldn't recommend it unless you're a really good player. 
there are better heavies out there. Concept 1B. Even the Chieftain, I would probably recommend the Chieftain over this one still. Because of the price, mainly. Um, but here's the thing. It's good enough, right? You can buy if you really want it. If you want to collect all the two 10s, it could be worth it. There is enough fluff in this bundle to sort of make it worth it with the, the free XP boosters and the 30 days of premium. Like, it does grind solid creds, so if that's what you want it for, I don't generally have a problem with that. If it be 20k, it would be even better. That's why I would recommend the Chieftain over it, because it's often sold for like 20k, something like that, with the same kind of bundles. And it's, it's not really worth that much more. Uh, really, like... Again, the differences between these vehicles are very small, and the majority of the difference will always come from you, the player. So if you're a beginner, if you're an intermediate, nothing for you here. But if you're an advanced player, you already know that you want it anyway. Like, I don't need to recommend tanks to advanced players, because advanced players most of the time already know what they want, right, from the game. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird thing, right? Like, if you make a shop review and you look at it from the view of, a, like, a really good player, then I'm recommending tanks to, like, 5% of the player base, which doesn't help anybody. So I try to always recommend tanks that are going to be fine for the average player, right? Because that's the majority of people. So, yeah, like, if I just go out here and be like, you can do 5,000 average damage in this tank if you have 7 bazillion percent win rate, that doesn't help anybody. That does not help anybody. So, ideally... Try to recommend vehicles that are good for the average player. Because the Super Unicum either already knows what they want, or they don't fucking need my advice in the first place. So, here's the thing. Type 62, fun tank, was sold for 3k before. That's my standard for this thing. It's 5k now, which is a hilarious joke for a, a tier 7. Like, 5k is a good price for a low-end tier 8. But it's a terrible price for a tier 7. So, uh, I would personally stay away from this. Light tanks and world tanks blitz have a very big problem. And that is that they're just worse medium tanks in a lot of regards. Because in world tanks PC, light tanks are actually important. Because the maps are four times as large and the view range is about 150 meters more on average than it is in blitz. In blitz the maps are a lot smaller. But the view range is still relatively high. So you're not really gaining a lot in the spotting capacity for a light tank for what you're losing in any other end towards medium tanks. Which means... Light tanks tend to be harder to play and less rewarding for the average player. So I would stay away from this one right here. Let's say we put the M4190 in here instead of the Type 62. Then two tier rates for 8.5k. Hey, that'd be fine if you want light tanks. If you like that, boom, go for it. Send it. But here, two vehicles that aren't really worth it. That are even overpriced the way they are and i'm just gonna ignore the heavy offensive because the 452k is a waste of space and the charlemagne is as well now we have the defender bundle down here i already talked about it last week if it included the new tl tsl7 whatever it would have been a great bundle if you don't have any of the defenders then well if you really want all the defenders it can be worth it but obviously don't buy this if you already have two or three of them, and the only defender that is really worth it and I, I can recommend is the Defender Mark 1. So the others are just uh, questionable. I mean, the AMX Defender is a mid i3 Defender's power crept to absolute hell. It used to be crazy OP in 2015, but it's no longer 2015. I wish it was, because then the world wouldn't be fucked. There is nothing in this bundle that is actually too worth it unless you really like the Defenders. That's about it. And then you also have uh, them for gold right here. Canavan Defender for 10k, that's a joke. Nope. 7.5k, it's okay. Like, if you really want to defend the Mark 1, you're just getting an auto-loading STRV-81, basically. So if you have the STRV-81, you really love the STRV-81, and you want an auto-loading version, there it is. But it's not the best bundle, but I don't have anything against it. Personally, it's not as terrible as this. So, still monstrous. Get it. It's good. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is probably the best bundle that's currently in the shop. 24 euros, two very solid tier 8s. I mean, the type is quite a lot better than the Tornwagen. I mean, quite a lot. And remember, with quite a lot, we're talking about, like, margins of, like, 10% from the worst to the best in this game. Always keep that in mind, right? But, yeah, the type is quite a bit better than the uh, Tornwagen. Can't highly recommend this thing. It's like the 25TU, but better. And uh, I can highly recommend this kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, there's nothing else down here except for fuck.
Now let's have a look with this very excellent vehicle that I have put multiple times as my number one pick for best fuel rate in the game. And I still stand by that to a certain degree. And um, what, what are you doing, my friend? What, what are you doing? Because here's the thing about this vehicle. It's not the greatest at any one thing, but it can do everything just right. Which makes this one of the most desirable vehicles in the entire game, because here's the thing. If you have a vehicle like this, same with the Tech Trade, the T125, for example, which I also recommend to pick up as one of your first tier 10s, you can find out a lot about your own playstyle, right? Because one thing they have to remember is you don't have to be good at every every tank. You don't have to like and enjoy every single tank. Like I, for example, I hate tank destroyers because I don't want to play the way tank destroyers play, right? Because that's just not fun to me. So it can be very important to find your own style with the game that makes you happy, that makes you have fun. And this is one of the very vehicles that can very much help you with finding that out because it can do just about anything. So whatever you end up doing with this vehicle, look at it. What are you doing? And then, hmm, okay, I want to play more forward. I want to sit more ba back. I want to play hull down all the time. I want to brawl with mediums. All those kind of things. I want to, I don't know, go to the city and, and brawl there. And please don't take this vehicle to the city, whatever you goddamn do. But if you do, you already know, hey, you want a mouse, you want a E100, you want something heavy and fat that might work in the city. So this is one of the very great vehicles to actually find out what you want. Uh, from your Blitz career, which is why I highly recommend it. Because, you remember, you don't have to know every single tank and be good at every single tank. That would be insane. Right? So, let's see. It's like cars. You can, you can like you can like a Bugatti, but you'd be like, Ew, Audi, basically. And the tank destroyers are my Audi. Doesn't make any sense, but anyway. So, what do we have here? We have... Good DPM. We have a very accurate gun for a heavy tank. We have a solid 9 degrees of gun depression. Good turret armor. Obviously, the cupola on top. But the mobility of this vehicle allows it to be moving quickly enough to simply avoid getting shot entirely. And uh, this guy is doing pretty well here for himself. Trying to... Uh, okay, now he's giving me his ass. That's not really what I'm into here. But um, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take that. And now we're going to have to turn around for the T-44. I know there's another guy somewhere back there. Two guys are over there, so they're not going to be a, a bother to me. I have no idea where the WZ is. I don't know. He's not there. Um, okay, he's out there. Okay. So three versus four. What do we have to do here? We have three versus one. Right? Take out the isolated target. And then ideally fight them one by one by one. This guy is obviously going to try to push me. So I'm going to go on the track here. So that he stopped that the elephant and the type can go and attack him. It's very important to block him. And now he's pretty much completely screwed and dead. And now we bring it back to E3 versus 3 that we can manage. And the R3 is also very low. I'm going to try a snapshot here. Didn't quite work out. Angle the armor left and right. That is what this thing can do as well. Like, just turn the damn thing around. Now the 54 just made a pretty terrible mistake because it's hard for him to get out without getting shot. There we go. And uh, now... We are in a quite good advantage because the IS-3 Defender is a one-shot. Very easy to take out. If I was the Type 62, I would just run around the back and shoot him in the face. So, uh, because the Type 62 does have very good heat rounds at 250 pens, so he's not going to have a problem penetrating the IS-3 Defender. Um, but I'm going to go with him there in case he does fail. Uh, the IS-3 Defender isn't a real autoloader. It has seven seconds, something like that, into clip. So, he has no chance here anyway and there is the big problem so he said gonna take one shot he misses and now i'm gonna go back i know that i can fire again before he reloads and uh, nope he drove out of the way wisely it's basically all just like being good at this game basically boils down to two things know what the hell is going on and then understand why people are stupid right like all you need to do is know what is happening on the battle where what how and then, what are they doing wrong? What can I punish? What is the mistake that this enemy is making that I can benefit of? Or, even advancing that, how can I force the enemy into making a mistake themselves? And now what I can do, like for example, bait out the track, just like that. And then boom, peek fast. And they're completely dead. So that's that. Angle sideways, even though I don't actually need to. 